video. Why have we got no video? That's very strange. Do bop, diddly bop. Uh, yeah, USB camera. Hmm. Well, we've got audio, but we haven't got any video. It's very strange. Why not? Right, there we go. Are we on? Let's have a look. Yeah, cool. Yeah, sorry about the uh, slight delay there. just had to reset my camera for some reason. Uh, I think it's all good now. Um, today's episode of Folky Fridays is going to be about um, strumming patterns. Um, I'm basically just going to do a kind of great big recap the next couple of weeks leading up to um, the dreaded, the dreaded festival, um, <laughs> the dreaded sea festival. You know the one I mean. Um, yeah, the next couple of weeks I was thinking I might just kind of go back over some of the stuff that I've covered throughout the year this year, um, kind of round it all off a bit before we break into new. Um, Virgin Territory in the new year. Um, but today's one as well, I mean, I'm going to be running you through strumming patterns. I'll show you the basic stuff that you probably all know already. And I'll also show you some more advanced rhythmic variations that I like to mess about with in particular tunes. Um, and ones that you see other guitarists do commonly as well. Um, some of these I've covered before, but hopefully some of them will be new as well. Um, as well as that though, if anyone's got any questions, anything particular they'd like to know more about, um, this is also kind of a bit of an open session today, so anything you'd like to know about, um, just leave us a message in the box and I will try and um, try and be helpful if I can. Um, other than that though, I am going to be talking about strumming patterns. So, um, let's go through from the very beginning. I think the simplest strumming pattern is the hornpipe, because hornpipes are nice and slow. Um, the interesting thing about hornpipes is some players play them straight and some players play them swung. Some regions like them straighter and swunger, if that's a word. Um, all sorts of things like that and influences from other types of music as well will obviously have a bearing on how swung people play them. So um, the basic hornpipe pattern is based in um, a principle that's really useful for all great strumming patterns um, in time signatures with fours or eights, well, time signatures with fours on the bottom. Um, hi, Keith, thanks for tuning in. Um, the principle is this, if you break your um, bar down so that you're doing a downstroke on each dominant beat, uh, in the case of hornpipes, they're in four, four, so you've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and you can see there, in between each of those downs, your hand has to come back up again as well. So what you're actually doing is changing direction on every single quarter beat or quaver. Um, sorry, every single eighth beat or quaver. Um, so you could, if your beat was like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, you could just strum along with that like one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... But obviously that would be a bit boring. But that is the basic um, principle for all good strumming patterns, is that you just keep that rhythmic motion of your strumming arm going all the way through. For This is for all patterns where the, uh, all time signatures where the number on the bottom is a four. So four, four being the main one. Um, it also works for three, four as well. Uh, I'm gonna come back to that later in the video. Um, the secret then to getting your patterns is choosing which ones on which ones to hit just the lower strings or the upper strings and which ones to miss out entirely. So in the case of the hornpipe pattern you go bump, chack, bump, chack. So that's down with just the root note, then the next down with all the strings, and then down, up, down, up. So down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up. And I'm sure you all know this already. Where it gets interesting is where you're following a player who plays it more swung or more straight. 
So if it's completely straight, it's something like... That kind of thing. Um, if it's swung, instead of being ba 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 ba, your quavers become ba 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 ba. They get a bit of a slink on. Um, so in order to reflect that, you need to do that with your strumming pattern as well, and that makes it more like ba 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 ba. So that's exactly the same pattern, it's just that every second and fourth quaver has moved a bit later. Now there's one thing that um, I've not really talked about with hornpipes before. Um, this is very common, most hornpipes have a thing which uh, my mum refers to as the pom-pom at the end. It's not a pom-pom, it's a pom-pom. <laughs> um, so basically what you'll find is they'll go bump ba 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 bump pom pom like that um so you 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 kind of follow that along with the guitar if you want to sound like a pro you get something like almost always as well either your pom pom will be on chord 1 or as I just did there, it'll be chord five going back to chord one. Pom, pom, like that. So that just rounds everything off nicely. And if you do a five, one, pom, pom on the end of a hornpipe in any key, you'll find it pretty much always is the right thing to do. Um, so that's the basics of um, hornpipes. My kind of go-to rhythmic variation is I always play them slightly swung, even if the play is fairly straight, because I like them like that. Um, if the player's really swung, then good times all round. Um, but a kind of stock thing to do to make your backing more energetic is to ch deliberately change chords a little bit early. Hi, Yvonne. Thanks for tuning in. Um, so with a hornpipe, for example, if I take... Um, what's that tune called? Da -da 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 -do 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 -do. Is it Boys of Blue Hill or Harvest Home? Well, whichever of those two that tune is, anyway, which I think is actually in the key D. Um, so what I would do is the chords are D, 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 A, 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 D, 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 A, A, D. And what, I, what you can do is, any time you've been playing chord 1 for a bit and you're bored of it, you can always switch to chord 4 and it'll be fine. So I might take that chord progression and convert it into something like... D, D, G, G, A, 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 D, D, G, G, A, A, D, POM, POM. And there's my POM, POM at the end. Sorry, my pom pom. <laughs> um, but yeah, with the G there, I could, the second time through the tune, or maybe on the second round of the A part or something like that, um, I could add energy by deliberately changing to that G just before the start of the bar. So I might do something like... Um, <laughs> see there I'm actually changing to the next chord on the upstroke of the preceding preceding bar um, so down 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 up down up and that's where I change and if you accentuate that it kind of um, sucks the tune along in a way it's like the guitarist is ahead of the melody player and it sort of adds energy and pulls everybody along um, Yeah, 
that's just a general thing that always works nicely. Um, you can always change into the next chord a little bit early as a nice rhythmic variation. Try and accentuate that upstroke so that it makes it very clear that you're doing it deliberately and you're not just sloppy. Um, and that's always a nice little, little trick. The next thing you can do with that then is you can use that trick in conjunction with linking chords. Um, I've definitely talked about this in previous videos but I think I was talking about doing it with jigs. So here's how you do it with this hornpipe. If you're going from D up to G, I'd use D and then my linking chord would be D with a thumb and that would lead nicely into G because that's given me a little bass line that goes D, F sharp, G. So if you're going from one chord to another, it's always nice to go into the second chord with a bass note that's either side of it in the scale. So like with D going up to G, we're going from D, chord one, to G, chord four, and we go via the note, which is the third note in a D scale, which is F sharp. So D, E minor, F sharp, minor, G. So uh, yeah, by putting in that little extra thumb there, we're going from D, oops, D, F sharp, up to G, like that. I'm just going to pan my camera down a bit, just the fact that you can't actually see what I'm playing. There we go. Um, yeah, so the way I would do that in this context would be to do something like... Actually doing there there's, there's actually there's two options either you can put your linking chord in a quaver before the start of the G bar so that would give you one two three and sorry one two three four and one two three four and one something like that so that your linking notes on the last quaver of the uh, the bar there dun dun da 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 dum something like that that is, sounds really nice, it's really funky, um, it's also quite difficult because it's so fast. So you might prefer to do one, two, three, four, and put it on the fourth beat of the bar before the, the G bar. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So there's two really nice little variations there, and um, using linking chords like that always sounds good. Thumb over the top is something I struggle with, old hand injury. Yeah, a lot of people find that one difficult. Um, I don't know if Rich is watching today. Um, I think probably not as he's having bats removed from his house, I believe. Um, and it's probably also an ungodly time of the evening in the, over there right now. Um, but I know he was saying to me in his last guitar lesson that he can't get his thumb around the back and he actually has started doing it kind of like that, I think, instead. So that might be a thing to think about. Either you could, um, if you find it hard to get the F sharp down the bottom with your thumb, um, maybe you could um, play that instead. That might be an option. So that's just, I've switched, I've taken my index finger off the D chord, moved my middle finger to where it was, and then put the um, index finger down there at the bottom and then you can get the F sharp still. That might work nicely for you. Um, or another option would be um, do it do a high up version of the same thing. Like that, by adding so you convert your D chord so that you're playing it with a little mini bar on the second fret. Um, and your middle finger on the third fret of the B string. And then add your um, ring finger on the fourth fret of the D string and that'll give you like a high version of the of the kind of F sharp linking chord and then in order to make that work then you'd have to slide up into G as a um, G as a bar chord uh, G with your thumb around the back of course not going to help you because you, you don't want thumb chords um, or you could just go into normal normal uh, normal G Something like that.
like that. Um, that might work. But yeah, your best option would probably be that one. Um, let's have a look at some other chords you can do this with. I mean, I'm just going to pick a key at random because the point with it is that you can go into any chord in this way by just going from the one that's either one below or in some cases one above works okay as well within the right scale. No worries Keith, yeah. Um, so if we, let's just pick one at random, I'm gonna pick A Dorian. So uh, A Dorian, we've got A minor as our key chord. We've got, um, the other options are B minor, C major, D major, E minor, um, F sharp diminished, we'll sub that out for something else, and G major. So let's say I'm going to go from, um, we're doing a hornpipe in A Dorian, I'm going to go from A minor to chord 4, which is D. Um, so I could do that by using C as a linking chord, because C is one below D in the chord scale. So... would work nicely. Um, I could go, if I was going from A minor and G was going to be the next chord, then I could go G, well one below that in the chord scale is F sharp if we're in the key of A Dorian, um, so I would use my D with the thumb chord, or if I were Keith I'd, uh, <laughs> I'd use that one instead because that's a lot easier. Oh just with that chord Keith, if you are going from um, um, like an F sharp kind of thing up to G then uh, if you play it like this with your ring finger on the B string then it's easy to get up to country G where the ring finger stays there because you can use that as a little pivot for everybody else if you're doing D with a thumb you've got your third finger on the B so you've got your, your pivot there as well so that uh, makes that into a nice easy change to do fast. Um, if you do want more tips, by the way, for people that are watching back on the, the replay, um, if you'd like to see a whole load of those kinds of shapes where they're designed to all go together at speed, I made three videos that show you all the, all the four folk keys um, and a set of chords for each one that are easy to change between. They're called things like how to change chords at speed, changing chords quickly in the key of G, those kinds of things. You can find them all on the Folk Friend channel anyway, so check those out if you'd like some quick change chord shapes. And they've got diagrams as well. Um, yeah, so that's about it for the hornpipes. The reason I started with hornpipes is because if you speed a hornpipe strumming pattern up a lot, you've basically got a real strumming pattern. Uh, reels are a bit straighter than hornpipes usually. Um, but you can use all the same techniques, just much faster. So if I was doing um, a reel in A Dorian again. So that's just using those kinds of little linking chords, and I'm always putting them... Bom, 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 ba, da, da. Um... Where am I putting them? Let me think. Three and four and... So that's doing them... Ah! I'm actually doing them differently in a reel because they're so much faster. If I was doing it at reel speed, you can do... Um, let's just go back to a reel in G, in D again, rather. Because rather, that was our starting point, wasn't it? Um... <laughs> So that's doing it on the last quaver like I was with the hornpipe. One, two, one, two, three, and. One, two, one, two, three, and. One, two, one, two, three, and. So I'm just putting it on the very last upstroke of the preceding bar there, my linking chord. You can do that at real speed, but it's really hard because reels are fast. And also, if I do it at actual folk tune speed. <laughs> Is there but you barely notice because it's so quick the listener probably isn't gonna hear that 
Um, you could do it as I did before on the fourth beat of the preceding bar, so that would be one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, and four, and like that. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and sorry, one, two, three, and four. something like that. Um, that's absolutely fine, you can hear that a lot more clearly, but to me that doesn't really add anything, it doesn't sound, it doesn't make the rhythm any more any more cool or danceable or, or anything particular, it's just like, oh there was a little, a little mini chord in there. Yeah. <laughs> what I really like to do is one, two, three and four and and the and four and is where I do it. So one, two, three, and four and up, down, up. So in reels, I do it a crotchet and a half or um, three eighth beats for the Americans before the start of the next bar. So one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one. Actually, um, once you've got your head around that, you'll notice as well. Um, oh, hey Ed, thanks for tuning in. No worries. Yeah, I'll tell me about it. Everything's mad here coming up to Christmas. It's crazy. I've been running around all day like a nutter. So. But good. It's good to be busy. But anyway, I hope you enjoy it when you uh, catch the replay. <laughs> um, yeah, what I was actually doing there is as well as changing on the and for and to my uh, F sharp chord, the last and is actually where I'm putting the G chord. So the G chord is one quaver too soon as well. So one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four. So yeah, basically, linking chords and putting your chords too early are the best way to uh, add some funk to your, your reels. Um, has anybody got any questions about any of that before I move on? Take that as a no. <laughs> I'll just wait another minute because there's quite a, a bit of a delay, isn't it? Do you know what I should do? I should put the the questions the questions elicitation in the um, in the chat box because the chat box is instant, isn't it? Cool. Okay, right. Let's uh, let's have a little look at um, jigs, the other really common rhythm, and then I'm going to have a little slip jig focus because um, I feel that that is something that's lacking from the channel at the moment. Is um, much info on slip jigs, and they're really common as well. But jigs, um, there's three main ways to strum jigs. I'll run you through them very quickly. I'm sure everybody's picked the one that they like and got good at it by now. Um, the one that I like the best follows the same principle as the reel of changing direction on every quaver. So this is the Dada Diddly pattern. It goes down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. And the reason that I like that one is because it changes direction on every single quaver. So really you're doing down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, 
down, up, down, up. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you're accentuating the ones that your foot taps on. It's really important that your foot taps and it taps on one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Foot tapping is really, really good for your strumming. Try and cultivate it as a habit because it keeps your whole body in time. So that's um, really, really useful just for not being able to drift out of time as easily. Um, so that's the Dada Diddly pattern. There's another pattern which is very popular, which is the more traditional pattern that you see most Irish guitarists doing. Uh, that is down up down 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 down up down. That to me doesn't sound as good, but um, and I find it harder to do at speed. But I will admit it does have lots of merits as well, like being able to throw in triplets a lot more easily and various other things. Um, if you want to make the down up down down up down one sound really good, it's nice to miss out the um, up every other time. So down 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 up down 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 up down 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 up down down. find as well with certain tunes, tunes like for example Morrison's Jig starts like that. That's a very common rhythmic figure in Irish music. It's doing that basically, it's got a quaver then a, sorry it's got a crotchet then a quaver at the beginning of the first bar and then three quavers. Ba, 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 ba. So if you want to back up the tune melody in your playing and you're doing the trad pattern, then it's nice to miss out that second quaver to match the tune. <laughs> or whatever. Um, there's one other um, jig pattern which I've touched upon on the channel, which is my uh, patented upside down method, Australian jig strumming, um, diddly dacada. It has many names, um, but this is my kind of favourite jig pattern of all, probably the one I use the most, which is on a similar principle to Dada Diddly, except that instead of beginning on a down, it begins on the up. So it goes up, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down. It can be quite hard to get that pattern to sound full because hitting the bass notes on an upstroke is difficult. But if you can get that right, then the fact that you've got a down on the kind of off beat of the bar, the fourth quaver, is really nice because you can mute that and you get a kind of percussive effect. I really like that pattern just because you, you're you basically your own snare drum. Um, so if you do want to practice that, it's up, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down. Do it about the mute to begin with, actually. Up, up, down, up, down, 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 up, up, down, up, down. And once you get the hang of that, you can start adding in the mute. So when you do the mute, you kind of want it to be um, this bit of your hand just here that hits the guitar, fairly quite a long way down your hand so that your plectrum ends up just down there under the strings ready to do the upstroke. Might even be worth just practicing the mute on its own. So yeah, that's that one. Anyway. Going on with that then, um, rhythm variations in jigs, there are absolutely loads of things you can do with these. Um, hmm, what should we start with? I've got a whole list written down here. Um, let's have a look at um, the changing early thing that I talked about a minute ago. You can do that easily in a jig. Let's take a jig in the key of D again, so I'm going up to G. So that's my linking chord on the last quaver of the preceding bar. So one, two, three, four, five, six. There's my linking chord. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's how you would do it with the Dada Diddly pattern. And then you could also 
also change to the A chord, which is the next in the progression. Um, you could change to that one quaver too soon as well. So that would give you one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, hang on. Oh. Oh, I tell a lie. Sorry, I'm changing to the A chord halfway through that bar. So. So that's down, down, down on the G, and up, down, up on an A chord. For Keith. Ooh. Something like that. For this A chord, by the way, um, this that I'm using is an A, uh, A7 sus4 you could call it, um, because it's it's basically an A7 chord, except that I've kept that ring finger on the third fret in order to keep my pivot there so that it's easy to change between D and G and this one. Um, and it sounds really nice as a, as a chord 5 in, in D major as well. You can also use this chord shape in place of A minor, by the way. So if you were in the key of G major, you could use that one just the same keep your pivot there so uh, that's a really useful chord shape that it works as a major or a minor and it sounds really nice um, yeah the next thing with jigs um, oh you can do that early change thing with the with either of the other patterns as well um, I won't go into too much detail on that, but if you were doing the trad pattern, it would be like down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, 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 up, down, down, up, down. There's your link. Down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up. Something like that. Next thing for jigs, um, triplets. Triplets are wicked. You can do triplets in loads of different ways. There's loads, If you look at different Celtic guitarists, you'll see some of them triplet going upwards, some of them triplet going downwards, some of them, Steve Cooney, just triplet all over the place. Um, but yeah, triplets are wicked. Um, let's look at the trad pattern first, because the trad pattern's probably the easiest for triplets. <laughs> actually two ways of doing it. Um, the basic principle is a little wrist flick that goes down up down and from that down up down either you can do an up at the end which to me seems more logical or you can do down up down down if you're super speed, uh, lightning reflexes, uh, wrists of steel kind of player. Um, I've seen people do both and both are possible but I like down up down up so we're going to do down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up. And when you do that triplet, it wants to be pretty much just from the wrist and not really from the arm very much at all. See, I've got a kind of slight twist to that wrist, which makes the triplet a lot easier to do. It's almost like if you've ever seen people doing that that thing it's kind of like that it's a little flick more it's a little flick with a twist more than it's a, a deliberate movement if you like so down 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 up down up down 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 up down 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 up down something like that so if you were to implement that in a pattern in that position <laughs> That would probably, that particular place of putting a triplet would probably be something you'd do. Um, maybe, let's say you played the A part through twice, 
That's probably where I would do it anyway, is this, like on a repeat of a part to make that repeat stand out um, in the first bar. Of course you can you can put it in wherever you feel like it, there's no rules to this. Um, I'm just saying that is where I would do it and that's probably an easy place to practice it. Um, the likelihood with these things is if I do it, I probably do it in the place that I found the easiest because um, I'm lazy. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it would sound something like <laughs> That's alright, thanks for tuning in and I uh, hope you enjoy the, the replay. Uh, we're just on about triplets. Um, yeah, so that's that's one type of triplet. Um, that triplet, if you think about it, was on the second half of the... Um, was it? No, it was on the first half of the bar. Diddle ding 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 um, The other type of triplet, it would be dung dung diddle ding ding on the second half of the bar. Um, um, these ones, basically the same thing, um, except it's on the second half of the bar, so you've got your two downs, and then down, up, down, up. to do them slowly actually. Um, there is another easier kind of triplet as well which I do a lot of the time just without really thinking about it so I'm just gonna have to do it and then I'll tell you what it is. So bear with me. <laughs> This one um, I find much easier because it sticks to my principle of always changing direction on, you know, constantly changing direction and never doing the same direction twice. So this one, you can fit it into any of the patterns. Um, you have to start on a downstroke. I'll have to do it again, sorry. So it's down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So this is a triplet that starts on an up instead of a down. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Dung, dig, dung, 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 dig, dung, dung, dung. Um. That's a really, I find that one much easier than the others to implement, but they're all doable. Um, anybody got any questions about any of those things? There is a video, by the way, in which I've kind of outlined most of these types of triplets. Um, it's called Jig Triplet Strumming Pattern, I think, or something like that. It's one of the older ones, but it's on the Folk Friend channel, and it's got little arrows as well. So we'll show you these if you've not seen them before, and you want to go back over them. Um, yeah, have a little look through the Folk Friend videos and you'll find it on there. Okay. Um, one other thing, just before we alter any of these strumming patterns, is um, combining them with muting. If I take the um, trad pattern as an example. You can see there I'm kind of getting a it's kind of like I've got a I'm imagining that there's a drum kit and that I am synced up with it. So for the bass drums I've got my bass on the first beat and I'm muting, I'm just playing the bottom strings, 
And this works particularly well with chord shapes like power chords or if you're in dad gad or drop D where you've got a nice low bass note. Um, for my kick drum then, I'm kind of um, muting it as I hit the strings. And again, it's this fleshy bit of my hand here that hits the strings. That way it doesn't hurt. <laughs> um, if it does hurt, then um, just get eating cake more. Um, <laughs> do less exercise for a few weeks and you'll find after a while it gets a lot easier. Um, but yeah, so that's my bass drum. And then, in order to get the snare effect, I'm really digging in on the upstroke. So I've got down, normal two strums just hitting the middle strings. And then for the snare, really dig in as you hit the up so that the top strings get pinged like that. And then two more strums kind of just generally hitting the middle. So. like that and that way you can really get a nice percussive feel just using some sort of um, muting on specific beats that works really really well really 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 well if you'll pardon the pun with reels as well um, and that leads me on to a different reel strumming pattern for reels where the player plays them a bit more swung than usual um, your normal bog standard pattern that you see people doing is kind of like <laughs> Chack, bumper chaka basically or variants thereof um, what I like to do for reels where they're a bit funkier is more like I call it the gotta have faith pattern because it sounds like the rhythm from that song I gotta have faith bump 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 like that um, WYSIWYG, thanks for coming back to us. <laughs> Hope you're well. Um, yeah, that pattern, basically, it's still based on the same principle, down, up, 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 down, up. Um, it's a pattern that takes up two bars to play the whole pattern. Um, but it's swung, so every other quaver is a bit late. So instead of being ba 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 it's ba 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 like a heartbeat. Um What you're gonna do then is down, up, 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 down. I'm going to put that in the chat because it's a lot to remember. Down, da, da, up, da, 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 Ah, I haven't done slip jigs yet. Um, that's next on the list, so you time that well. Down, up, down, up, down. Down, up, down, up, down, up, 
down, up, up, down, down, up, down, up. That's it. So that's the that's the gotta have faith pattern. Um, basically, you're muting all of them except those ones. So you really accentuate those ones. You do hit every single quaver, but lightly for most of them, and just accentuate those ones and slacken the mute off a bit. That kind of thing. Um, what was I talking about before? I was something led me onto this pattern. Um, can't remember now. Jigs, changing early, upside down strumming, muting. Oh yeah, muting with this pattern. Um, this pattern is particularly muted, and it really lends itself to choosing which ones you do or don't mute. I generally choose not to mute the ups and to mute all the others. So if you keep it nice and muted and bassy, um, try to mute the upper strings a lot more than you mute the bass strings, which I do by just resting my hand at a diagonal on the bridge like that. Um, time you do an upstroke you can't help but release the mute for a second because doing the up makes you do that and I kind of really dig the plectrum like that it's a whole kind of like you're scooping ice cream kind of motion so that um, that pattern really lends itself well to being used with muting and if you selectively choose to mute or unmute some of them you'll get some really interesting rhythmic variations on that oh I wouldn't know about that I've not really not really seen him I'll have to have a look um, Biddly B yeah that's basically what I wanted to say about that seeing as we've got a request for it let's move on to slip jigs um, Slip jigs are great. There's there's loads of ways you can do them. They're also in an odd number of quavers, which means that in some ways they're very confusing. So a slip jig is uh, in nine eight. It goes one two three four five six seven eight nine one two three four five six seven eight nine one two three four five six seven eight nine one two three four five six seven eight nine. Yeah. Um. In the same way as a jig, a common melodic pattern is to have a crotchet and then a quaver at the start of the bar. So in other words. Um, let's take an example. We'll use the butterfly as an example that goes bum bum ba 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 bum bum ba 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 bum bum ba 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 like that. So you've got your You've got your uh, crotchet at the start. You've actually got some more crotchets um, there, which is unusual, but um, yeah, like that. Um, if you're strumming, if you are somebody who, like me, likes the patterns that change every quaver you're going to end up with down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down as your first bar. Your second bar, if you want to keep on changing directions, is going to have to start on and up. So I call this the alternating slip jig pattern. So you go, first bar is down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Then the second bar would be up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Um, I'm doing this on a, an E power chord, by the way. Let's switch to E minor, just normal E minor. It's easier. Um, so, one, two, three. Uh, one, two, and. Down, up, 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 down, up,
can see there it's sort of confusing but as long as you tap your feet and accentuate the ones on which your feet are tapping then it will come out sounding nice and rhythmic. The way then to make it sound like the melody is to miss out the second quaver in each bar. So down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, Something like that. Um, if, on the other hand, you're of the school of thought that pre prefers the traditional pattern where you go down, up, down, down, up, down for a jig, then you just add an extra down, up, down for a slip jig. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you can see there I'm still missing out that second quaver to get the nice feel that kind of makes it clear where the start of the bar is. So one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That kind of thing. Um, does that make sense, WYSIWYG? Is that the kind of thing that you were looking for? find out anyway. <laughs> um, you can throw triplets into those in exactly the same way as jigs. So if you're going with the, the trad pattern for example it would be Ah oh, that's great. Which which one do you do you do by the, are you on the trad pattern or the uh, direction changing one? We'll find out in two minutes when the lag catches up, but uh, yeah. So triplets, yeah, it's exactly the same deal as the as the jigs. The easiest ones to do in slip jigs, I think, is the down, up, down one, and you do it on the second block of three quavers. So down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up. Down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, down, up, down. Something like that. Trad. Ah, uh, uh, Yvonne's on the direction changing. Yeah. Go on, Yvonne. <laughs> Team Dada Diddly all the way. <laughs> no, it's funny because I've seen... It's really funny, like, people that come for lessons, there seems to be a 50-50 split between... I always show people both, and people... Um, seem to just have a natural, complete um, inability to do one of them and ability to do the other. Um, but yeah, I was always on Team Dada Diddly. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I think the trad one seems to be more natural for most people, just that people naturally want to put down strokes on dominant beats. Um, but yeah. Um... There's one more... Oh, I haven't done polkas, actually. Um, hmm. Well, I'll just say a few very quick things about polkas. I did cover most of this in a fairly recent video about the um, Steve Cooney-style polkas. Um, polkas are very, very fast. Um, it's hard to add any kind of ornamentation to them because they're so fast. Um, unless you're doing like some serious cardio workouts um, in order to keep up with them. But um, so polkas are kind of like. You know, you're, you're really struggling to keep up a lot of the time. If you fill in the ups on polkas, then fair play to you. Um, that in itself is a nice rhythmic variation, just changing your down, 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 down to something like. That kind of thing. One thing that can add a bit of a, a, 
a difference of feel to a polka, as well as starting out without the ups and then adding them in for extra energy now and again. Um, another thing that you can do is to use chords like the bar chord I was just playing, uh, sorry, the power chord I was just playing, or a bar chord, or any chord where you're fretting a lot of the strings. You can mute with your left hand as well as with your right. If you just if you take a bar chord like an E minor bar chord up here, for example, on the seventh fret, if I pull my left hand off, that kind of kills the chord straight away. So if you're playing a polka, you can get a kind of la pomp, kind of uh, gypsy jazz kind of feel by just pulling off bar chords as you play them and that really changes the feel of a polka. Um, one thing I like to do generally is let the chords build out, you know, if you're playing um, chords you start out muted then you get gradually less muted Muting with the left hand instead, and that makes a really nice sudden contrast, which uh, adds a lot of energy in the right context. Borom playing really helps with finding a rhythm. If you can play one that is, I find them quite similar to strumming. Yes, I totally agree. Um, they are exactly like strumming. It's the same wrist movement and everything. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. Borom playing is great with finding a rhythm. And uh, actually, if you if you are a guitarist and you've got access to a borom, I reckon it's probably a really good uh, good thing to go and have a, have a go on one and see if you can convert your strumming patterns into borom patterns because it really helps with your kind of supple wrist and all that as well. Um, so yeah, yeah, definitely a good idea. Yeah. Um, one other quick thing on polkas, if you're Steve Cooney, instead of playing down, 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 you sensibly conserve energy by doing down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, make the up kind of jerky. And then you can get all sorts of triplets in there as well. I'm not very good at these. I did manage to make a whole video about how to do them, but um, I must say I very rarely do myself because I really need to practice them more. You can fit them in anyway. It's the same movement, down, up, down, up for the triplet. Um, there are lots of other ways you can fit them in as well. I made a whole video about all the ways you can fit them in. It's called um, Steve Cooney Polka Style or something like that. Um, so yeah, check that out if you want to uh, have a look at those. But um, yeah, if you do polkas as down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, at speed that's much easier. That way it's also easier to fit triplets in. But they are at an ungodly speed, so yeah. Gypsy Jazz, yes, um, as I'm sure you can tell, I absolutely love Gypsy Jazz, and I do dabble with it um, fairly often, yeah. <laughs> um, it is my, my plan down the line to, when, when Folk Friend um, hits a certain level of, of following, to start the Finale Guitar channel, which was my original YouTube channel, back up again, and do videos about jazz. But that'll, that'll probably be sometime next summer, hopefully. Um, but yeah. Um, very last thing I wanted to talk about was waltzes. Um, this is a sneak preview of tomorrow's video, which is going to be about waltzes. I had a request from uh, one of my students, Barry, in Australia for um, Raglan Road, uh, how to play the song, and it's a waltz time. And I realised that there's, obviously, there's lots of Irish um, songs that are in 3-4, and I've never made a video about how to strum them. 
But it's exactly the same principle for a waltz. You divide your bar into the three dominant beats. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Probably just tap your feet on the one because of the, the speed of them. Um, one, two, three, one, two, three. What you can start out with is just plucking one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I'm doing it on a G chord here. The one is going to be just your root note, and the two and three is everything else. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And that works fine for a waltz, but it is a little bit boring. What you can do to add a bit of variation is fill in the two and three and. So the ands are going to be your upstrokes. One, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one. So that's the waltz pattern. You can see there it's operating on the same principle as all the great strumming patterns, except for the ones in compound time, the ones with eights on the bottom. But all the ones with fours on the bottom work the same, and that is always move on every single quaver, change direction, and then fill in the ones that you need and miss out the ones that you don't. So in this case, it's one, silent up, two and three and. One, two and three and, like that. Down, down, up, down, up for a waltz. Um, there is going to be a whole video about that waltz pattern, and I will. It's a two parter tomorrow's video as well. It'll be out um, tomorrow at half past 12, and it will show you how to strum a waltz um, in a bit more detail than that with little arrows on the, the overlay in the corner. And also, uh, then the second part will show you all the chords you need and what order to play them in to get Raglan Road, the Chieftains and Van Morrison version of that. Um, with the triplets WYSIWYG, they, they are, they seem really difficult to begin with. The easiest way to start doing them, I think, is learn them on a jig, play along with a really slow jig. Uh, oh, this is a good opportunity for me to plug my play along series as well. If you want to practice on an easy one, the Kesh jig play along would be a good one to start with. Um, it just plays the tune really slowly and shows you on the, on the screen what the chords are and I'll put a link in the chat now so you can have a go but um, if you're doing the trad pattern um, down up down down up down just try adding a little wrist flip really slowly down up down down up down up so bum 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 down up down down up down up like that and that will be the easiest kind of triplet I think to, to start with dum dum da da dum dum down up down down up down up Give me your hand. Is that um? Is that a song, Frank, or a tune? I don't know that one. That's the Kesh jig play along, by the way, Wizzy. It's on the uh, on the chat there. If you do want to practice along with a with a jig. In fact, let's search it. Give me your hand. Give me your and oh, wolf tones doing it here we go be your hand and i will walk with you through the streets of our land through the mountains of old land give me your hand that's so interesting, actually, that you mentioned that one, Frank. Because just I've never I've not heard that song before. Um, but looking at it, if you look at what they're strumming, they are doing a thing that I often talk about, which is they're matching the rhythm of the melody in their strumming. So they're give me your hand, da da dun 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 dun, whatever the next part is. Um, oh, they're in C. So the F chord is on uh, give me. Hand. So they're, they're using the strumming pattern I was just talking about, one, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and, but then they're going, give me your hand. Something like that. So one, two, three, 
three downs for give me your hand. Something like that. So that's a really nice thing to think about if you've got a melody um, that, that has a particular rhythmic thing in it um, it's really nice to try and reflect that in the strumming and if you can reflect that either by just doing downs on the dominant beats in it like they've done there or by keeping your pattern going on every quaver and just working out which ones you need to miss out in order to accentuate the melody notes you'll get um, a really nice melodic effect by doing that. I've just got one very last thing to say about this actually because that's just made me think of a tune, a really common tune which I can't remember the name of which <laughs> isn't very helpful so sorry about that that one road to somewhere but uh, I'm sorry I can't because it, it's just occurred to me I can't think what it's actually called um, but I'm, sh I'm sure you've probably heard that tune because it gets played in sessions all the time it's like mega popular um, but yeah that tune because it starts with dum bum bum I like to start the chords with <laughs> So that's exactly what um, the Wolf Tones are doing in that version of Give Me Your Hand as well, is just put in three downstrokes on those dominant notes and uh, that kind of makes the chords follow the melody and it just sounds really cool. Um, that tune actually, I could probably make a whole video about that tune, you can do loads of interesting things with it because the rhythms in it are so unusual. The B part... <laughs> It's got that You can follow that bit with your strumming as well So with that I'm still keeping my quaver changes going down, down, up, down, down, up, one, two, three, four, five, something like that. Uh, yeah, so anyway, yeah, that's, uh, I, I will actually probably, in fact, I'm going to put it on the list to make a video about that specific tune, because there's loads of things you can do with that one, and it's just great. <laughs> um, where is my list of things to make videos about? I'm just going to have to put that bump bump bar tune. <laughs> uh, we've got a question. Reeled in 58. Just a quick one before you go. Nothing to do with strong fans. Right, okay. I watched your post on drop D tuning. Have you tried a spring capo over the first five strings leaving the bottom E open? Yes, I have. Um... And there's um, a video about doing that exact thing, which I made when I was in Spain. Um, yeah, I'm not sure whether I talked about doing it in drop D. It works really nicely in drop D. If you, you do, you mean putting it there like that and then playing in like as if you're in uh, A. <laughs> I do 
do do that. I really like doing that. The, the time I would normally do that is um, uh, in D minor. It's great, isn't it? You can you can do loads of good stuff in D minor. <laughs> progression with the with the capo on the fifth fret just taking an A minor seven and sliding it up two frets this just sounds amazing doesn't it so yeah um, that's a really nice idea Put it on the second fret if I'm on my own. E is not good at a session. Uh, on the second fret. I've tried a spring capo. The first five. Do you mean you put the the capo what like that on the on the second fret with the D string? Oh, so you're in C. That's cool. So I never would have thought of doing that. Really nice. Because um, C is not... It doesn't occur to you really... Well, it doesn't occur to me to, to do things in C because folk music just doesn't do things in C. But there's no reason not to capo the second and play in C and actually be in D. It sounds really nice, actually. Some nice chord shapes as well, can't you? I'm just going to sit here for three hours now and noodle with this. Got your drop D in E. Uh... Oh, I see what you, I see what what your what you mean is not what I've done, is it? What you mean is is this where I see, yeah. That's a really nice idea as well to get the drop D sound in E with a partial capo. Um, yeah, you make a you make some good points here, Realdin. Thanks for your your input. Do you know what? I think I might make another partial capo video down the line somewhere. <laughs> uh, I'll put that on the list as well. It's the more things to make page gone. bigger notebook. More partial capos. Um, we'll call it drop E. Drop E tuning. Capo second. 
and that other thing was cool as well, I like that. Call cool that C D drop D capo second. A and C. Cool. Does anyone else want to um expand my capo horizons or uh, got any questions about anything or um any other any other business? <laughs> Well, thank you all very much for tuning in. Um, thanks for the really interesting input as well. Um, and um, yeah, I'll, I'll be back next Friday, same time, half past five UK time. Um, tomorrow there will be a two-part video about waltzes and how to play Raglan Road. Um, next weekend, I think it will be session tips. I'm not sure whether I might postpone that one, just because there obviously aren't any sessions on at the moment, so it feels a bit like... Maybe I should release it when there are actually some sessions to go to. Um, so it might be something else, but we'll see how it goes. Turn a Kaiser Kappa around the bash, back pushes three strings to form the chord A. Huh. Yeah. That's uh, another thing that I haven't played with yet. I've got that partial Kappa, and I've only really used it for the one little thing so far. So uh, I've been meaning to try and actually compose some things with it as well. Um, but it's one of those that I'll do one day when I'm not just working flat out all the time. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a really interesting point. Uh, uh, nice one. Thanks, Yvonne. Glad you enjoyed it. Lots more coming soon. Um, yeah, wicked. Cheers for tuning in then. And I will see you all next weekend and uh, for a video tomorrow. <laughs>